When you stop for a moment and take it all in, the beauty of a golf course is breathtaking. At TBC Deer Run in Silvis, Illinois, Alex Studeman and his dedicated team took the canvas that they have been given and have created a spectacular painting. During the 50th anniversary of the John Deere Classic, I followed the turf crew to pull back the curtain on the passion and drive required to maintain a high-end golf course, both leading up to and during a PGA event. For any outdoor event, especially a golf tournament, weather conditions are always a concern for a golf course superintendent, and the Midwest climate presents its own unique sets of challenges. You have to accept the lack of control with the weather. You know, work through what you're given and find the positive. And our staff and has challenged me to challenge what the weather's given us, and, and I couldn't be happier with where We've not only come as people, but also with the turf grass, of course. I arrived on the night before the first round of the tournament, and weather was already playing a factor in preparing the golf course for day one of PGA play. We're planning on getting all of the fairways and approaches, tees, and greens mowed tonight. We're also rolling the greens and checking all of our moistures, um, as well as smoothing out bunkers, filling divots in the fairways. Um, and then we, we all have to descend upon the practice area, which the players are wearing out at this point in time just because they're getting ready for competition. So we have to get that all cleaned up and prepped, the practice cups changed. And, uh, and then finally, the last half hour, 45 minutes of our evening, we're actually preparing for tomorrow morning shift, which based on the time that we're going to get out there, it could be after 10.30 tonight that we're finished, and we'll be back heading on the golf course at 4.30 tomorrow morning how long it rains for it can determine how much work we're going to get done tonight. A few storms passing through the area were delaying the start of evening maintenance, but Alex and his team were planning accordingly. I don't either. They can go out and just go one hole at a time, stay a hole behind for now. Okay. You want okay. to just send out 12653 then? Yep. Yep and he can just start on one. The crew of nearly 60 gathered for instructions on evening maintenance. All right, we're gonna get going here. We need everybody to listen very carefully. As you well know, weather can have some great impacts on our operation and tonight is no different. So the scenario this evening, from what I've determined thus far, is we had about three one hundredths of an inch of rain right here. In the parking lot of the clubhouse and apparently most of the back nine, almost a quarter of an inch of rain. So what we're going to do, and listen very carefully to your assignments, is we're going to start mowing fairways and approaches and uh, walk mow approaches starting on number one. Then I'm going to go ahead and try to find, find out where that rain line exactly stopped. And we'll mow up to that point. We're still going to do our divot filling. We're still going to walk mow tees. We're still going to take care of all of our greens maintenance data. All of the other stuff, the one variable is the fairway mowing as well as the intermediate cuts. Each member of the crew is assigned a specific job and the assistant superintendents lead the teams out onto the course as they split into the front nine and back nine. Teams get to work quickly as each superintendent helps to look over the details of the course while I learned a little bit more about the daily testing that happens with the greens and what that data is used for. We use them as on the agronomy side just to track if we need to water, how firm we're getting, speeds obviously, uh, just kind of what we'll do for an agronomic plan morning and evening. As we've been doing this, there, it also gets put into not just a yearly report, but it goes into a report that actually goes through the whole length of the tournament since we started doing data so we can see historical averages in the uh, afternoon we try to get out ahead of their roll in the mow that way we know what it's like after and what they're playing on in the morning 
and then we know what they're playing on all kind of day until we mow again. They check all 18 greens and the putting green as part of this data collection. The crew continues their work and Alex runs around the course checking on conditions after the rain, which ultimately only hit certain holes of the course. Seven was dry, eight was dry, nine, as you've heard, is a little more wet, ten was soaked, eleven, twelve, and thirteen were soaked, then fourteen has started to dry up, fifteen, nothing, seventeen, eighteen, nothing. So I figure it blew up right here yeah started mid property daylight was fading as the practice facility maintenance took center stage to round out the evening oh he's got some good roots The sun even decided to show up and equipment was prepared for the next morning. It's just a matter of wherever this low pressure sits. He says if it, basically if it goes south, we just get more showers and if it creeps back north, a little more rain. A very early morning wake-up call has the crew at the course and ready for morning maintenance around 4 a.m. But y'all did a great job getting the golf course set up in a very quick amount of time. Tournament starts today, so this is go time for us. Both of your supervisors will probably be, be a little more particular about the details. First tee time is 6.45 off of each side. I'm assuming that our <coughs> rules officials will probably start down each respective side about 5.45. Each crew rolls out in complete darkness, ready for their morning duties on the course. I don't know if you've ever mowed in the dark, but straight stripes are hard enough during the daylight hours, let alone with nothing but a headlight to light your way. We're normally staffed anywhere from 18 to 22 uh, hourly positions plus three to four uh, key staff positions from about mid-April to mid-October. Then for the tournament, we'll bring in anywhere from 25 to 35 volunteers that will allow us to complete these maintenance regimes in the windows afforded us by the PGA Tour event. Just a few short hours after morning maintenance, afternoon maintenance occurs after play to prepare for the next round. A large crew performed the essential jobs of filling divots with a mixture of sand and peat. The greens are rolled. Fairways and tees are mowed. and hand watering is done in areas of the course that dry out more quickly than others. Another evening of maintenance is complete. It may seem like all these tasks were just completed hours before, but there's an important reason for this. To get a, a, a quality surface for the PGA Tour, it's a lot about frequency. So we can put multiple cuts on the putting surfaces and it makes them more consistent from one surface to the next. When a person tees off on number one, they're going to have the same playing experience when they're putting out on number 18. 
So by increasing those frequencies, we're taking out the variability of the turf as much as we can. And then by tracking the data of those practices, we can then more specifically manage hole by hole something that may need more attention to further bring that into equilibrium. In addition to Alex and his job of overseeing the whole crew, the assistant superintendents have a key job as well. I had an opportunity to spend a day with each of the superintendents to see what happens behind the scenes as they lead their crews throughout the day. The first was Andrew Cooper. Andrew's road to the turf industry is a story of true passion for his career that also required a leap of faith. You know, I think it was just lucky for me at an early age of really being able to be in the classroom with the kids in the education um, field and at the same time working on a golf course in the summertime. So I kind of had both at the same time and it was just a, uh, a, a clear uh, difference between which one I enjoyed waking up for and which one I didn't. And I was kind of just raised by my mom when I was young. Ever since kind of middle school, I was uh, kind of under her wing. You know, as that time came when you know I was starting to get those feelings of, all right, I know that she wanted me to be a teacher, um, and I'm just not feeling it. How do you how do you tell your mom or how do you tell your family, hey, I'm I'm going to go into the the turf industry. At the end of the day, if if I'm happy, I feel like I, I get more out of the day in return of what I do, then I feel like I made the ultimate decision and, and that was a correct one. You know, once these guys get done with them, just making sure that the rake direction up the slopes is proper, making sure that they're always pushing away from them and the rake, it's always just about uh, hiding your rake passes. These turning boards are placed on our collars just because you got our greens mowers turning there, you've got our walk intermediates turning there, Anything that we can do to alleviate compaction, turning, foot traffic, the better those things are going to survive. People wonder about, you know, how do we decide where the pins go. A lot of people think it's just uh, we just go up and pick a random spot in the, in the, uh, in the green and, and cut it and call that good. However, this is, uh, we've got years and years of kind of just past um, tournament history as far as where, where pins have been. So. These are all deemed with the PGA rules officials. Uh, they'll be the ones setting up uh, the pin locations for the whole week, including practice rounds and pro-ams. And so we have a, a set location rotation that uh, these, these pins go. Let's go to actually number 10 where we are. So 19.4 are your two measurements. So 19 feet forward paces off the front of the green, and we'll be going four paces off to the right of the green. These are set actually the day before, so this morning, after uh, we're finished up with our morning task, the PJ rules officials will be coming in behind us to actually mark the locations for the pins tomorrow. Um, and then that way they can print this off, uh, have it for us right and early in the morning. So we're good to go tomorrow morning. You may have uh, had jokes in years past of, oh, you, uh, you ever use scissors or anything like that to cut grass? Well, actually, come tournament time, we do. So come down to the precision art of cup cutting. We want to make these edges as nice as possible, perfect as possible before we paint them. So any little uh, grass blades hanging over the edge, we'll, we'll use these little scissors. Cut that up. When we spray paint the, the top little bit of turf there that's exposed, we don't want any white paint to be uh, you know, on the top surface of the putting green. So it's kind of just a, a protective cover. Some people may be like trying to figure out why we take the time and we adjust and we tweak and we do all these small little changes each shift to get these lines down or you know whatever it is that we're trying to do and then you, you get that one tv shot uh on camera when, when professional golfers are, are on your course and um, it's a satisfactory element to everything we do so we always have one bend on all of our fairways so we have one bend so then it's just trying to figure out is when you get to the bend all right and then i slowly start creeping left, creeping left, and until I'm lined up right with that TV tower behind the green, and then now I'm just focused on that TV tower. You know, your straightest line is not looking down at you, is look as far as you can in the distance and just stare at something. Stay focused on that one point, and then at the very end, you get all the way at the end, turn around and you either hate it, you love it, come back, do it again, or you, you love it and 
come back and tweak it a little bit. You know, normally we don't won't see this amount of large area in this approach being a hot spot, but just the, the amount of traffic that's on it, a little bit more compaction. You know, the turf is kind of like, what are you doing to me? So all these grass blades are almost like a little individual. You know, they're getting too hot. They're getting torn up. So they're trying to protect themselves. And that's what you see in the kind of the tip burn, the uh, kind of the browning, yellowing out. It's just uh, them being dried out. The, the plant protecting itself and trying to save as much uh, water and nutrients it can to survive. I don't know, were you walking on the greens last night before we mowed? You got 156 players all wearing spikes. You got 156 caddies all walking on it. They're walking on every green. So we get out here in the evening and you know these things are just torn to pieces and it's just amazing of you do a cut in the evening, a roll, and then we do the same thing in the morning with the double cut and it's almost like these things uh, haven't been really disturbed as far as the, the condition of the, the top uh, portion of the, the turf canopy. As maintenance moved along, the threat of rain moved in once again. Is he on uh, 15 right now, Andy? Yeah, front, front approach is done. He's doing the back approach. Okay, my suggestion, Andy, is do 16, 18, then 17. Just because we know what happens to 18 and what weather. All right. Uh, 16, then 18. 17 last. Just as the rain started to fall, the crew finalized their task for the day, ready for the final push with even more rain in the forecast for the rest of the weekend. You know, our golf course, uh, tees, fairways, and greens are creeping bent grass. And then our rough is a bluegrass, fescue, ryegrass blend. So we're kind of dealing with a number of different animals uh, in terms of disease pressure, especially with the bent grass, but then also some of the unknowns that come with, a, with an older bluegrass rough, summer patch, bipolaris leaf spot, helminthosporium. You know, so we're, we're constantly on the lookout and on our property, we sit on a river bluff, clay, slow draining soils, a lot of trees. So the microclimates really challenge us uh, to work with air movement, light penetration, and water, water, water. I mean, if, if we're getting rainfall, we lose control of our, our most important asset. We got about a little under two tenths of an inch of rain at the golf course last night. It was steady. So that was good. It didn't all come at once. The bunkers have not been impacted. The fairways are a little soft. We want to keep as much of our traffic outside of the ropes today. We are watching another band of rain just to our uh, west and southwest. We're going to continue to cash in all of our chips, do whatever we can to keep that rain moving southward. They have adjusted the round three pairings in regards to this forecast, so they will be playing off of both number one and number 10 beginning at 10.09 this morning in threesomes. So we have ample time should we get held up. But also, if we don't get held up, we have ample time to really tune this thing perfect. Great job last night. That was one hell of an effort to uh, do what we did literally just in the nick of time. So great job and two more to go. As we drove into morning darkness once again, Jared Chapman's story is much like the other superintendents. Sometimes this career just seems to choose you even when you had other plans. Yeah, so actually going out of high school, I wanted to be an engineer. That was actually the start of it. Well, kind of the start of going to college and thinking about that. Well, my dad actually works for uh, DNK Products, which is a turf supplier through Des Moines to uh, here in Bettendorf, Iowa. I talked to him and his salesman, and it kind of got me interested in the turf side of it. Well, then I was like, you know what, I'm going to try it. So I went into turf, and then got my freshman year, I got an internship here, and the rest is history. I have been here since. It doesn't feel like work when you love what you're doing. The hours, yeah, they're, they're there, they're long, but seeing this product that we're producing, especially on TV right now, that's, that's incredible. Task one for Jared is to check the greens for any debris before the real mowers clean up these putting surfaces for the day. Similarly, the bunkers are inspected for proper raking and attention to detail expected from a pro tournament official. The bunkers are definitely a big thing, especially with the rules, um, like the, the rules officials. So that's a big thing is getting those tuned up and, you know, it's taken a couple days every once in a while to, a couple days to get it all in sync and, but 
now they're all, everyone knows what they're doing and they're looking good. Jared also explains why the continued concern for heavy rain could be an issue today. Standing water on tees, if there's any standing water on greens, uh, fairways, and then just the bunkers washing out. And if it does do that, then it's a, a scramble to get everything back playable. It's, it's very interesting, that process there is just, it's like, go, 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 let's, let's get it done, get it back, get play started as much as possible so we don't have a delay. And that threat of rain indeed moved in. been a wet day out on the golf course which is going to limit some of our maintenance tonight. Um, fairways are wet, approaches are wet, greens are in good shape though so we're going to get all of our maintenance done there, get tees mowed, get all the divots cleaned up so we're just going to spend that extra little bit of time working on that um, and then get ready for the final round tomorrow morning. It's going to be raining according to the meteorologist so we're we're preparing accordingly. That plane is heading to the British Open tomorrow night, so this tournament is getting done by 5 o'clock tomorrow, come hell or high water. And it might be high water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so great job. Listen to your assignments carefully, and we'll get out there and get it done. Like I noticed on two, there was just a little bit of stuff like about 60 yards out from the green. Okay. Go, go back and look so you okay. can give them a specific direction. So little, any little divots we need completely blown off. Alex just called and said we need to go back to one and five. The night ends where it always does, the practice facility and regular maintenance of equipment for the final day of this tournament. Well, we're here at the final day. We made it. Good job. We've got uh, 6.40 tee time off of number one today in twosome, so they're going to be moving a little bit quicker. We've slightly adjusted the dynamic uh, to lean more towards the front nine, but uh, on behalf of the Deer Run family, we want to thank all the volunteers that came in. We cannot do it without you. Down to every last job, you made this tournament a success in getting us across the finish line. To the Deer Run staff, you guys nailed it again. This golf course is fantastic. The reviews have been stellar. All right, but again, on behalf of everybody and me personally, thank you. On the final morning of maintenance, I got to ride along with the big boss, Alex. And once again, his story seems oddly familiar to the other superintendents on this dedicated crew. My background getting into turf, uh, is somewhat like a lot of people in our industry. You know, as, as a kid growing up, my old man put me in charge of uh, mowing the yard. And uh, I started taking affection, you know, for straight lines. And much like everybody, I'm an opportunist, want to make a little money. And so I started mowing two or three yards in the neighborhood and got a job working at the local municipal golf course uh, right out of high school. Thought it'd be a great summer gig while I pursued an engineering degree. And again, realized that I was never going to be an engineer. And my father came up to me and said, you could do this for a job. I said, I never even gave it a thought. I didn't know I could get a degree. And found out that the University of Minnesota carried a uh, program uh, just for this and nursery and horticulture. And so I was able to parlay just kind of this childhood, uh, summerhood joy into a career that I've now been in since uh, 1995. Spending any time with Alex, you will instantly feel his love for his work and what makes him continue to spend day in and day out dedicated to his craft. Cause I think it's because it's tangible. You can see the changes almost immediately. It's instant gratification. You know, you can go out, especially with what we've done this week. A week ago, we were just digging out of a bunch of sloshing rains and we couldn't do anything. And now to see it a week later, so finely manicured, we're reaching our targets for green speed and the players are commenting very positively on the golf course and you can't usually get things that quickly in a lot of other professions. And it doesn't hurt to be able to watch it on TV too every now and then. Alex and the crew took to the course on the final rainy morning. It, it goes against all logic. They, these greens have so much plant growth regulator on them and the fact that they've been mowed three times a day for the last 10 days. It shows the resilience of turf grass. It really, really does. I mean, unreal. 
I think I said it a couple of times, our, our, our variety of bent grass is perfectly suited to the middle of July. It is its happiest right now. But this is even, this is, this is drug-induced jubilance compared to what I'm normally seeing, which now, you know, come 12 hours from now when the final putt drops, I'll be very happy because there's a lot of grass left on the golf course. Yeah. I mean, it's had a little bit of stress, but in normal years, because we don't overhead water and our watering is focused on that, this is practically dirt all yeah. the way to the cart path. Yeah. Alex is also a great teacher, and this morning I learned a lot about something I never knew, dew patterns. I can't remember what morning it was, maybe Tuesday morning we were still dry. I could see exactly where Will needed to water on the back of eight because the dew pattern was light. You know, so it's, in, in these, these instances it helps us. It's an easy tell that you normally don't have um, or don't think about. And like any good leader, Alex isn't afraid to get his hands dirty. By the end of this morning, I was not only soaked, but I had fully grasped what this whole experience was all about. This isn't just about turf, and it isn't just about golf. It's about finding something in your life that you're passionate enough about to spend hour after hour and day after day in pursuit of greatness. And it's finding a group around you who wants those exact same things and strives to make every other person better. The purpose of life is a life of purpose. What a blessing it is when you find yours.